Every year throughout schools in the U.S., there are bound to be students bored out of their minds in Algebra 2, staring at their calculators and just wondering, why does it have a headphone jack? Now obviously it wasn't designed to be a headphone jack. In fact, a 3.5mm audio connector won't even fit into the 2.5mm socket. But before anyone can cry clickbait, even though it wasn't originally meant to, this port actually can function as a headphone jack. Just trust me, we'll get to it later. In reality, rather than being a way to get audio out of the calculator, the I.O. port, or link port, is a way to get data out of the calculator, and also into one as well. Before USB ports, on some of the older TI-83 models, the link port was how users could load programs, graphs, and other data onto and off of their calculators. The computer interface required a special cable adapter. But the nice thing is that the communication protocol was so flexible that you could even plug two calculators together to share data with no computer middleman. To pull that off though, the calculators needed a really simple communication protocol, one that ensured the data was sent properly, would work on hardware with varying clock frequencies, used a cheap communication medium, and most importantly, a protocol that worked symmetrically. A lot of materials will refer to the transfers from the link port to be serial, and while that isn't entirely wrong, the proprietary format used by Texas Instruments won't work directly with most other devices that communicate over serial. The communication occurs over three wires along the link cable, one ground and two for signals. For a normal serial communication, both calculators would need to agree on a clock rate and transfer data bit by bit along the wire until they were done. The problem is, for an entire family of calculators, they may not all be running at the same CPU speed. That means that some hypothetical new and more powerful model might be able to communicate faster, but either it would have to limit itself to a slower frame rate in order to remain compatible with the older devices, or have some convoluted method of resolving the rate of transmission between the two calculators, which gets really unfriendly on the user end. Point is, things can get messy pretty quickly, and that's ignoring things like managing who talks when, among other important details, all while still trying to keep the protocol down to just three wires. The method by which TI calculators do share data, while non-standard, is actually a pretty elegant solution. Each of the two signal wires represent either a 1-bit or a 0-bit. When two calculators are connected together, both hold the signal wires high, but the moment one wants to send a bit to the other, it'll pull one of the two wires low. And to confirm that that bit has been received, the second calculator will pull the opposite line low. By sending eight individual bits, the calculators can transmit an entire byte and those bytes can be combined into larger packets of data. The nice thing about this protocol is that, not only is it symmetric, either calculator can start the transmission in the same way, but it also resolves the accuracy and speed issues, since the sender won't move on to the next bit until the recipient has confirmed what it's received. If both can go quickly, the entire exchange will finish quickly, but if one of the two takes longer to keep up, the faster one will just wait until the other's ready. To ensure our agreement on who talks when, there also exists a link protocol which lays out what a conversation between two calculators should look like, say when they're exchanging a variable. That protocol is made up of packets, essentially one byte which gives the version of the calculator that's sending, one byte which specifies the type of packet being sent, and depending on the command, two bytes to indicate the length of the message and then the actual data embedded in the message. The cool part is, one calculator can initiate either part of the transfer. It can send a variable to the second calculator, or it can ask the second calculator to send a certain variable to it. And the transfers aren't just limited to numbers. In fact, every type of data that the calculator stores can be transmitted, whether it's numbers, text strings, lists, matrices, programs, and even images. And that brings us to the fun part. There do exist a few peripherals for the TI-84 family that connect through the link port, like data logging sensors and even a robot. But what's really cool is that, since we understand just exactly how these calculators communicate, it isn't that hard to make our own peripherals. Take this accelerometer here, that the calculator can request readings from within a program. Or this text-to-speech chip, that, well, lets the calculator speak whatever it sends out of the link port. I like to type my calculator at speed. Personally, my favorite bit of hardware though has to be the TI-84 printer. You just send a graph picture file, and by way of a little image enhancement magic through the propeller chip, 
The TI-84 can print its graph screen along thermal tape, like any other desk calculator. It actually kind of surprises me that, as far as I can tell, this printer may be the first of its kind. There does exist a printer for the HP graphing calculators, but despite how obvious an addition it seemed to be, there doesn't seem to be one for TI's calculators. Oh well. I really had some fun printing out the 9 sections of a high-res ray traced image that I programmed a while back. Since it's all on paper, it's really easy to reconstruct them into one giant, beautiful, high-resolution printout. Now it's worth noting here that for these peripherals I built, the calculator isn't acting as much more than the input to some other piece of hardware. The propeller chip is doing most of the work, sitting in between the two devices and translating the proprietary TI link format to something more common, like standard serial. In the case of the printer, the propeller is also rotating the image and introducing dithering to get a better looking output on the tape. The link port can also do more than just pass internal data around though. Specifically, since it was also intended to be used to connect to a computer where a user might want to perform maintenance tasks, many of the TI calculators can also be controlled remotely through the link port. There are special commands and codes to emulate essentially any key press that can be made on the device. So, purely hypothetically, if someone were to work out that command format and the key codes it used, said person just might be able to make an external keyboard to control the TI-84, like this one here. The nice thing about the external calculator keyboard is that it has a full-sized QWERTY layout, rather than the tiny ABC layout on most calculators, making it way easier to type quickly on, and also no longer SAT legal. In fact, a lot of times using this, I end up typing so quickly that the actual TIOS can't keep up with me. It still is a good bit faster on the Voyage 200, though the OS is much better at keeping up. And while that one already has a QWERTY keyboard, it still can't beat being able to type on something full-sized. It may not have been what Texas Instruments had in mind when laying out the remote key press protocol for the link port, but this external calculator keyboard really makes the device a joy to use. I've shown off just a few of the ideas I could come up with to make use of the TI-84's link port, but the collective creativity of the internet has done way more than I alone could ever manage to pull off. We're talking turning the wired protocol into a wireless transfer method, complete with an instant messaging program that runs between the two calculators, adding a touchscreen to the face of the calculator and being able to draw right on it, adding a Game Boy camera so that you can take selfies on your calculator, and some projects even more daring than that, like a system to network anywhere from 2 to 2 million calculators. Someone even managed to connect their TI-84 to a simplified version of the internet, complete with its own little internal browser application. I've said it before and I'll say it again, calling these things calculators really does them a disservice. After all, they may be good at crunching numbers, and they're certainly underpowered compared to other pocket sized devices, especially for the price. But it truly goes to show, even with just a little bit of creativity and a tiny bit of hardware tweaking, one can make a boring old graphing calculator do some pretty interesting things. And on that note, I think it's about time that I fulfill the promise I made at the very beginning of all of this. Yes, the link port can be used as a headphone jack. After all, it is connected to the CPU. And if one were to play the levels of the two signal wires as two audio channels, and also write a program that rapidly changes the state of these lines, they might just be able to generate a tone from the data transfer port of a calculator. And with a bit more complex programming, the calculator would be able to play nearly any song you throw at it. So I think I'll leave you on that. Some beautiful music being played entirely from the I.O. port of an old TI-84.